Who says? The community says. You're different. You may be growing up in that house, but you ain't really like them. I remember she said that when when she grew up and they when they both grew up, she said they they took a trip together. This is brother and sister, they took a trip together, Hawaii. It's the first time we felt like we belonged somewhere. Because in Hawaii everybody's on the side. Um, okay, so the community impact. Um, if the race is emphasized in the community, then racial differences are important and everything else doesn't count. If religion counts, everything else is ignored. If cultures are important, being the same religion doesn't matter. Um, one of my respondents, the person named, I call Piggy, uh, talked about going, growing up in a Catholic school where uh, there was a great deal of distinction between the kids who grew up in the Polish neighborhood, in the Italian neighborhood, and in the Irish neighborhood. And the fact that you were all Catholic was irrelevant because your Catholic really wasn't the same as our Catholic. And there was a good deal of discrimination there. And the Polish Brazilian woman that I told you about before, her parents brought her here as a young, I think she was about 12, and they deliberately tried to come here because they wanted her to grow up in a Polish community in Hamtramck. And at the time, there were a number of Polish-speaking schools in Hamtramck. And they took her to enroll her in a Polish school because at least, I mean, this would be her cultural background. And though she knew Portuguese, she also knew some uh, Polish. So at least they would understand her and she would understand them. You know what? They refused to accept her because she wasn't really their kind of Polish. She had to go to public school. It's not what her parents had in mind. The community decides what's important. Um, here's uh, an example from one of my respondents who was Native American and Caucasian. I call him Peter. He spent most of his early life in California, quite close to the, the reservation where his father had connections. And he spent a lot of his time on the reservation. He spent most of his summers there with his grandmother. Um, his he talked about how in that environment, <coughs> um, Native American culture was not particularly stigmatized in the environment because there were so many of them. And But income disparity was really important in the school. If you didn't have the right clothes in this California school and the right designer stuff and you didn't pay for the right amount and all that sort of thing, you were really not very uh, well accepted. Then he moved to Michigan. His parents got divorced. I think his, his mother was from, from here and moved back here and went into, um, I say a Detroit middle class high school. I, not, I don't think it was Detroit. It was one of the, one of the uh, Detroit metro areas. And he said he liked it here because there was less emphasis on income disparities and clothes, but Native Americans were not welcome in this community. Um, so the racial issue was different, but it was also a mixed race not just Caucasian, but also black and Caucasian. He says, I wasn't invited because I wasn't black. <coughs> his his uh, final comment was, around here people are meaner. He developed, I'm gonna, I call it an interracial identification. His best friends were a Filipino, an Irish guy, and an African American, and they all were pretty good skateboarders. And that was their, their connection. Um, but racially and ethnically, they, none of them kind of fit with their group. Um, here's another example of two communities. Um, Sarah is the person I mentioned earlier. Uh, she's an East European refugee. Um, her background includes um, Jewish, Greek Orthodox, um, Romanian, I can't remember all of them, but many East European and, and both Christian and Jewish. In the first town she went to, which is a very small community in, in Michigan, um, she didn't speak English very well and she didn't know much about the culture, but she found friends very quickly. The family was accepted and she says, they considered us exotic. We were different, we were strange, but everybody was really pretty, pretty um, cordial to them. And then 
um, they moved to the Detroit area and, and lived in a suburb. And, and she says it was two years later. Her English was much better. Her knowledge of, of American culture was better. Um, both the school and the community, they were constantly, wherever they went, told, go back where you came from. You don't belong here. She said, she learned the word DP. They were constantly saying, you're DP, you're DP, you're DP. So I didn't know what they were talking about. Displaced person. Well, that was after the Second World War. This is, um, you don't hear that term much now. But um, yes, after the Second World War, there were a number of people who had been refugees from Europe after the war that were allowed into the United States and were called displaced persons. And DP was a negative term that was attached to these people. And um, so the focus was on race, their immigrant status, i.e. that they were DPs, and their language. And she says, um, they were constantly told to go home. And she says, I didn't have a home. That's what a DP is. Um, I mean, think about people who are displaced from Iraq by the Iraq war. There is no home to go back to. It's gone. So, where are they going to go? Well, they should go home. Um, they are not very hospitable, hospitable sometimes. Um, here's an interesting um, example of how the community defines ethnicity. Uh, Vicki is a person whose uh, father was Irish Catholic and his mother was, uh, and, and her mother was Jewish. And but neither one of them was particularly good at. Um, particularly interested in religion. They didn't pay much attention. There were three children. Um, one of the children was very close to her Jewish grandmother and became a Jewish, a practicing Jew. And as she grew up, she became a practicing Jew and was very active in the Jewish community. One of them became very close friends with a neighbor who happened to be Catholic and was always over to this lady's house. And she would... Um, on the sly, make little rosaries like the Catholic lady had, and she grew up to convert and become a Catholic, like her once Catholic father, who thought this whole thing was rather silly because he didn't think religion made any sense anyway. And the third was a brother, so they have two girls and a boy. The brother, like his parents, was not very religious, but he had a very high value for his Irish heritage. He married an Italian woman, and they had a little girl who was now half Italian, one quarter Jewish and one quarter Irish, right? And she walks around in these little dresses that have tram marks all over them and identifies her and, and has a very Irish sounding name and says, I'm a little Irish girl. Um, you can be named and take whatever identity you choose to if your community will let you. And in this family, they let you. And I, I, I even, after she described all these differences, I said, how often do you talk to your relatives expecting her to say, well, you know, maybe we get together once or twice a year. I haven't seen. She says, oh, two or three times a day maybe on email. I mean, this is a very close family. And they come to be close together by recognizing the fact that I can be who I am and you can be who you are and you can be who you are and that's all fine. Too bad we can't all do that. Um, Okay, um, ethnic communities. Let me give you some examples of rejection by your ethnic community. Um, Sarah, she's the one who's, um, whose background was Jewish and Greek Orthodox. She has a, uh, her father was the one that was Greek, and so she has a Greek-sounding name. People were constantly coming up to her and saying, in Greek, oh, so you're Greek, and then be angry with her for being untrue to her heritage by not knowing the Greek language. Um, Evelyn, Evelyn, who's a very interesting combination of Chinese and Korean. Remember, people are always saying, oh, well, what is she? Just Asian, right? If you know anything about Asia, that makes as much sense as say, just European. I mean, European countries have been killing each other for the better part of about 2,000 years that we know about. And then we can go back further than that if we really try to. And the same thing is true in Asia. Koreans and Chinese and Japanese haven't gotten along.